Y'all already know what it is, Vision Gang. And if you didn't know, you better find out because this is your boy Division. And we back again with another one of these UFC reactions, y'all. This time it's best UFC fighters by fighting style. So I'm really interested in this to know uh, what the different fighting styles are. Because honestly, I don't even think I know what all the different fighting styles are. And it'll be nice to know that. And then to know who the best fighter is in each one of those styles. So I can kind of, kind of when I'm watching, I can kind of put that into perspective when I'm watching. That's going to be awesome to find out and learn. And I hope y'all enjoying these videos. If you're really enjoying it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and smash the like button on this video. Let's go ahead and get right to it. The beautiful thing about MMA is that there are many, many ways to get your hand raised in victory. From kicks and punches to takedowns and submissions. These are the fighters who do what they do better than anyone else. Best knockout punch. Francis Ngannou. Knockout we artists. promise that there will be some controversial picks to come, but to kick things off, how could we not state the obvious in declaring Francis Ngannou to be the proud owner of the Ooh. fiercest knockout punch in history? Bam. Even with competition Bam. like the famously hard-handed Derek Lewis, oh. the one-shot fight-ending sensation that was Roy Nelson, or even the Super Samoan Mark Hunt, Ngannou's ability to put your lights out leaves all the competition trailing by some distance. Raised in Cameroon, where from the age of 10 he worked in sand mines, shoveling days in the sweltering yeah, heat, building the type of that. physical frame that would later grant him his worldwide success. And when it comes to the rise of Francis Ngannou, though his fundamentals have indeed improved over the years, his story is one that revolves around that one-hitter-quitter power. He doesn't even need to catch you clean to end your night. Sure, there was certainly a time where issues of cardio, of defensive wrestling, of mentality, where certain shortcomings in his game could have been exploited. But judging by his recent run of form, that window has unfortunately slammed closed. Mm -hmm. A nightmare matchup so much for better. every single mixed yeah. martial artist on the planet. That, that That's skill gap sure. done closed. Best knockout kick, Edson Barboza. Though he has found success at featherweight, when Edson Barboza applied his trade in the 155-pound waters in his prime, there was no single kicker in the sport Ooh, who combined his speed, like power, and hurt. lack of telegraphing to such a ferocious degree. He's not alone in this department, of course. Anthony Pettis, Mirko Krokop, and Leota Machida all could have nabbed this award on any given day. But for our money, this kickboxer's talent for using his legs edges him out ahead of the competition. Whether he's destabilizing you with some of the best leg kicks in the game, knocking the gas out of your tank with a body kick, or taking your head off with a spinning attack, Barboza is just built differently as a kicker. Man, with perfectly that's, that's shredded scary, muscles actually. bursting out of every limb and picture-perfect technique, you can you just tell that Barboza like that. isn't slacking in the gym. His kicks that are a be. thing of beauty. His finishing instinct, elite as they come. Just take one look at his iconic spinning wheel kick knockout of Ooh. Terry Edom and try and tell us that he's not the single best kicker in the sport of mixed martial arts. Edson Barboza is a man who is made to throw kicks, forged with the singular purpose of damaging legs, hey, livers, that's crazy. and brain I like that style, equal man. measure. That me like that's Rock submission Lee, artist, you know, Charles anime, Oliveira. Look, we all know just how good Ronaldo, Jacare Souza, and Demian Maia are fighters who bring a wealth of experience on the BJJ circuits with them to the cage. But the record books cannot be ignored here. With 14 submissions during his run in the UFC, Charles Oliveira is the most lethal submission threat in UFC okay. history. And though his jiu-jitsu fundamentals are, of course, excellent, it's the wild man mentality of Charles Oliveira that has helped him catch so many of his opponents off guard. And for a large portion of his career, it was that same trait that got him into trouble time to time again. For years, especially during his time at 145 pounds, Oliveira was seen as the type of fighter who'd either get you or succumb to the finish. It was a label he carried with him for years before eventually tying it all together upon reaching the lightweight division. Now a multi-pronged threat with excellent striking to augment his stellar submission skills, Charles Oliveira just doesn't bring that same recklessness to the table anymore, replacing it with a much more refined game, one that sees him retain his strengths while moving past the shortcomings that had been his downfall time and time again. If any fighter, black belt or otherwise, leaves an arm or a leg idle during a scramble, this lightweight champion is as good as any at snatching it up. And for our money, he's the most dangerous submission threat in the game. Best wrestler, Habib Nurmagomedov. There are Facts. takedown artists, and then there's the relentless force of nature that is Habib Nurmagomedov. It was never a case of 
if this Dagestani legend will get hold of your legs. It's more a question of when. And during his time at the top of the sport, there was an aura of inevitability that followed Habib into the cage. An aura that struck fear into the hearts of all those who supported his opponents in their attempts to defeat him. Even great wrestlers like George St. Pierre, John Jones, and Randy Couture can't contend with Nurmagomedov's incredible efficiency in there. He might not get you down with the first shot, but through his constant pressure and his ability to chain his attempts, Habib, through his 29 professional fights, always ended up getting his way. And when the fight finally does hit the mat, that, unfortunately, is when he really starts to get comfortable. Whether you were an all-American wrestler like Justin Gaethje or a longtime BJJ black belt like Rafael Dos Anjos, Habib's run in the UFC served to prove that there are, indeed, levels to this game. He might have bowed out of the game after just 13 fights in the UFC, but there are mm. only a handful only of fighters fights in the in history the of the sport who can boast a so. legacy quite like Habib's. A one-of-a-kind fighter, that's for sure. Best tactician, John Jones. Okay. John Jones John fights Jones. like he has a direct line Go. of vision yes, with all me. the stats and the judges' scorecards, fighting as if he knows exactly where the fight is headed in terms of its real-time scoring. Indeed, he's a man of many traits, but during his reign as light heavyweight champion, John Jones managed to surpass the great George St. Pierre as the owner of the highest fight IQ in the history of the sport. To put it simply, Jones is always in control, even in the fights you think he might be losing. Look at his showdowns against Thiago Santos and Dominic Reyes. Sure, you could score those fights for the challengers to the belt, but John was able to win those tightly contested bouts by remaining calm and playing the judges by showing them what they like to see. Even if you scored them both against Jones, anyone who understands MMA scoring criteria will tell you that outpointing John Jones by a strong margin is near impossible, even if you're doing more damage. On top of this, fights against the likes of Lyoto Machida and Daniel Cormier displayed this guy's insane ability to make reads and change up his game plan mid-fight, finding ways to secure the finish within a round of coming up against a complicated puzzle. Indeed. His physical traits are plentiful. He's playing the game. Ask us, it's the mind of John Bones Jones that has allowed him to truly extend his success at the highest levels. Best boxer, Dustin Poirier. Okay. This category would have been harder if two of its main frontrunners didn't have something in common. Sure, Jose Aldo would be an exceptional pick for the sport's greatest boxer. But when both Conor McGregor and Max Holloway have both dropped losses to Dustin Poirier in fights that were largely striking affairs, yeah, our hands are kind of tied. Poirier's improvements over the years have been truly shocking. Finishes of guys like Eddie Alvarez, Anthony Pettis, and Justin Gaethje eventually saw the diamond rise to the very top of the lightweight division. And though he does throw kicks here and there, it's that odd, stance-switching, right-handed southpaw style he utilizes that has truly made his success what it is. His uniquely effective approach to boxing in MMA has allowed him to get the better of fighters who, at one point in time, might have been seen as better boxers than him. And when Conor McGregor fell at his hands, Dustin's merits as an all-time great striker just became that bit more clear to see. His natural frame, cardio, and fight IQ help his entire approach mesh into one cohesive unit. But make no mistake, it's the boxing of Dustin Poirier that is truly the star of the show. His defense is outstanding, and he packs a lot more power than most give him credit for, making him the sport's most outstanding example of a watertight boxing-heavy approach. Approach. Best kickboxer, Israel Adesanya. Easy. And finally, we come to another hugely competitive category. History has shown us so many examples of excellent kickboxers in MMA. Athletes who, upon landing in mixed martial arts, fine-tuned their foundational approach perfectly to meet the more multifaceted needs of their new home. Stephen Thompson, Alistair Overeem, and even Anderson Silva have pushed the sport ahead in massive strides during their own respective eras. But if we have to single out one perfect example of kickboxing prowess in MMA, we'd have to give our vote to the last stylebender, Israel Adesanya. Carrying himself like a character straight out of the anime cartoons he holds so dearly, there's a certain performative quality to the way that Adesanya conducts himself within the octagon. He faints, pivots, and parries like he's completely weightless in there, firing off shots with little to no telegraphing. We've seen fighters like this in the past, of course, guys who flow smoothly, but none of them have been able to rise to the top of the pile quite like Stylebender. Among all of this generation's elite strikers, he's the one carving out a new standard for the stand-up game, bringing the sport's kickboxing into a new era entirely. 
equally deadly with his hands and kicks, Adesanya only seems to be growing more and more comfortable with his increasingly well-rounded MMA skill set. And when you consider just how well he adapted his game to suit the comparatively smaller 4-ounce gloves that come with fighting in a cage as opposed to the ring, it speaks volumes about his merits as one of the greats, a future Hall of Famer, that's for sure. Alright, so yeah, that was a really good video. Best UFC fighters by fighting style. I done learned a lot about different fighting styles now and seen some other examples of other fighters in those categories as well. Of course, I knew Ngannou was one of the best knockout artists. Um, the guy who was doing the kicks, that was dope. Um, then you got uh, Poirier, who I need to definitely react to because he knocked out, um, well, he don't think he knocked out, but he beat Conor McGregor and he's beating some big names in the game. That's dope. Of course, we all know about Izzy and the kickboxing style. John Jones being a um, tactician, I didn't really think of it that way, but yeah, he do be playing the game. Um, Khabib in the wrestling. So yeah, that was really interesting just seeing all the different goats in those styles and seeing the other people in those um, categories as well. Um, I got some names in that I'm definitely going to react to in the future. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, y'all. I'm really enjoying it myself. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you're really enjoying the videos, y'all. And before you go, man, let me know down below what you guys thought about this video. Who do you think is the goat in each category let me know your opinion down below and make sure you let me know what else you want to see me react to and as always y'all be safe give it your all every time and i'll see you next time peace